All right, everybody. Good afternoon. I believe it's afternoon in every part of the U.S. right now. So I think we've got that right. I uh, wanted to welcome everybody to this week's webinar. Uh, we're really going to focus this week on some of the classroom challenges. At the end of the day, remote users, whether they're workers, whether they're classrooms, whether they're students, teachers, whatever it may be, the challenges are all very similar. And we've been doing a lot of webinars about how these challenges can be resolved for businesses, enterprises, things like that. We wanted to uh, touch today, make it a little bit special of kind of some of the school things, but at the same time, those challenges, those items, they're all really the same. Um, you know, people are having the same experience issues and things like that. And so this will be less than 30 minutes, probably closer to 20 minutes, but I'm just going to go ahead and dig in. Um, currently, we won't be taking any questions or answers uh, during this webinar. We're just going to kind of go through a simple presentation. If you have questions afterward, please reach out to your Simple WAN rep. I'm sure they'd be happy to, you know, answer those for you. So quickly, my name is Eric Knight. I'm the CEO of the company. Uh, we're based here in uh, Prescott, Arizona. And uh, yeah, no, we're excited to uh, share with everybody who's joining us today kind of what's going on, you know, a little bit of background and then digging into really what we do that's different than some of the other solutions out there and uh, just how we're really making a difference. So again, thank you for joining and uh, let's get this party started. So first of all, there's an era happening right now and it's been happening for a long time. You know, people are moving home, whether that's for school, whether that's for COVID, whether that's for work, it's happening to where instead of people are sharing desks, people are sharing internet connections. People are, are you know, working from home, schooling from home. Um, and even schools are losing students to, you know, home or online schooling. And so there's no guarantee. I know there's, a, there's vaccines on the horizon, things like that, but there's no guarantee that any of this stuff is gonna go away immediately. So, you know, we want to put that out there that not only has this been the 10-year trend of what's going on, it may be more of a permanent thing for a little while longer than we all hope. And so a little bit of planning and going over as to what we're doing and why we're doing, uh, you know, that's, that's really what we want to go through today. So the key thing here is staying productive and connected. And I know I said that backwards, but they are going hand in hand. Everything is online, whether you're full-time in school, full-time at work, collaboration tools are online, cloud apps are online, video learning is happening, video conferencing, uh, and then of course things like Google Classroom. People rely on these things day in, day out, Go all the Google apps infrastructure, and if you have a bad internet connection, if you have bad Wi-Fi in your house, if you have you know a bad router or, or firewall, these things are a struggle to basically be productive. So the first challenge comes down to connectivity. And that's the biggest struggle. You know, it's 2020. We all thought that, you know, the internet, we'd have fiber to our house and it would be amazing speeds and amazingly fast. And unfortunately, it's just not the case, especially when everybody's moved home. It didn't give the internet providers time to prepare for this. Kind of works like the power company. And that is during the day, they shift power to the business region. And at night, they shift it to the home, except for internet, you got to have all these ground lanes and all of this stuff laid well in advance. And the capacity in the residential areas just isn't there. And so many people are struggling, whether it be outages, loss of connectivity, you know, just slow connections. It's a massive and major problem. And I think I touched a couple of these, but, you know, we talk about productivity kill killers as, you know, they're really just internet connection issues. They're internet quality issues. And the big thing that I didn't touch here is, you know, it, it we'll dig into it later in, in this presentation, but poor signal. And that poor signal could be your Wi-Fi. There is, it, it, Wi-Fi as a whole was not designed very well. And your neighbor interferes with you if you're in an apartment complex or, or a dense area. There's not enough channels. I mean, there's so many things that can go wrong, but it causes network congestion, which ultimately causes internet outages and causes productivity issues. The idea was hotspots were to the rescue, but there's some problems with hotspots. Now I'm gonna go through them really quickly, but 
you know, first of all, if your home internet doesn't work well, sure, you put your phone in hotspot mode or you get a hotspot from uh, your, uh, your wireless internet or 4G carrier, but there's problems. First of all, they're little tiny pucks and they're designed to work at coffee shops or in your car and things like that. And first of all, in rural areas, they don't work well. They were not really designed to work inside buildings. They don't go through the bricks. They don't go through, you know, stucco. They don't go through any of these things very well. And because of their size, they don't have very good antennas on them. Therefore, you know, they just don't perform very well, except for maybe at that coffee shop. When you talk about schools specifically, or even, even, even for business deployments, they're so easy to tamper with. They're commodity. They're designed for consumers. They're designed for the end user to be able to do whatever they want to it, change the passwords on them, factory reset them, change the settings. So they're so easy to tamper with. It makes them very hard to secure or, or keep them locked down or keep them in a certain configuration. Then to top it off, we talked about all these, these first three. When any of these first three happen and something breaks, they're very very impossible to troubleshoot. You don't know if the user was in there playing around, changing passwords, changing configurations, if they factory reset it, if they dropped it in the toilet. I mean, there's just so many things. The only way to truly troubleshoot one of these, and that's outside of, you know, that's saying the device is malfunctioning. That's outside of signal issues or making it work through walls or brick. You have to get it back and then you have to touch it and you have to make sure it works. And that eats up IT resources. And the final item really comes down to uh, administering policies. Again, if, if somebody can just log into it or touch it physically and make changes, how the heck are you supposed to roll out policies? And when things change in the field, let's say you want to block a website or you have a new compliance item, how do you roll that out to the hotspots in the field? You can't. I mean, that's the simple answer. So while we all hoped, hey, simple hotspots to the rescue, they're not working too well. Then what happens if things go south? These things are out there and you just don't know, you know, there's no data coming from them. How do you troubleshoot them? How do you know it's not a personal issue? How do you know? You, you can't see how the network's performing, not remotely. You can't see what kind of signal they're getting or what kind of tower they're attached to. There's no standard network. There's no standard layout in a community. So when somebody says, hey, it's just not working, that's it, you give up, There's, it's just not working. There's nothing you can do to make it work. You can say, hey, move by a window. Hey, go outside. These are not solutions. It's just problematic from a, from a standpoint of, as far as trying to support these things. Maybe you can do one or two, maybe you can drive out to somebody's house, but when you're doing tens or hundreds or thousands of hotspots, how do you do that? You live on the phone trying to keep these things in line and keep them on task and keep them going. It's taken the IT burden of managing a central network at an office or a school where it's much more manageable and spread it out to a big area with so many unknowns, it makes it very hard to do. And then the thing is, is there are no remote controls. I know some hotspots out there do have some reports that kind of give you an idea of what websites are going to and, and, and have basic reporting. But so when you find something wrong, how do you make a change? Do you walk your user through the little interface on it and make those changes? Do you, do you, you know, how much time on the phone does that take? With the simple end, and we'll get into it. I mean, there, you've got remote controls. You can do everything without the user doing anything. And that leads into human behavior. Who the heck knows what these people are doing in the field? You just don't. Are they, are they making changes? Are they connecting other devices to it? Are they again, dropping it in the toilet? Are they, you know, are they standing in their basement? You just don't know. And the only way to resolve this is to know and be able to do something about it, whether it's a mile away or a thousand miles away. Again, the last piece of this comes down to safety and security. What are they doing? How are they doing it? How do you deal with those things? That's what we're gonna describe here. So campus experience and home experience very different, especially a hotspot experience. It's pretty raw. It, you can roll stuff out and, you know, I know there's a lot of CISPA uh, filtering technologies out there, but they're very easy to bypass. It doesn't take much to change your DNS settings or connect a different device and get past all of those filtering things that can be rolled out on a hotspot. 
the goal is you want to give them the experience of an office experience or a campus experience so that that experience is exactly the same as the home experience. And unfortunately, you can't do that with traditional hotspot or other technologies. Once it leaves your building, you've lost almost all control and the user gains that control. And that's very dangerous. I want to talk about kind of what we do and how we do it a little different. And that's where we're going to. So you've got this remote schooler or even remote worker, and they're behind a device that looks like a traditional router or a home router, uh, but it's got all kinds of antennas and it's got our full dashboard platform to let you not only see, it tells a story, a complete story as far as what's going on, what the, what the people are doing, you know, what the internet's doing, what the Wi-Fi do, is doing, what their network's doing, what's connected. I mean, it tells an entire world story about what's going on on that site, but then it allows you to do something about it. We want to do three things. And first of all is, is get these people connected and keep them connected. Again, it's back to that productivity thing. Simplify the automation and troubleshooting process. So when things go south, and they do go south, if you're managing more than one device, they don't work perfect all the time. And so you've got to be able to quickly address and deal with this. And then the third thing is enforce policies at the network level. I know they've got lots of great applications out there and things like that. You can put on a a Chromebook and things like that, but people can get around those at the network level. And we can provide those same kind of restrictions at the network level. So here's a, a quick branch of our dashboard. And so this, this quick screenshot gives you a kind of an idea of what this, this world looks like for this. I think this is one of our offices. And by looking at this single, single pane of glass, and I know I hate that word, uh, it tells a story. It tells the whole world here as far as what's going on with this, what kind of bandwidth they're using, what their experience is. Are they having a computer issue? Are they having an internet issue? Are they having a wireless issue? Is it no issue at all? Maybe the application's having an issue. We call this network where is Waldo. And when somebody calls in and says, hey, my Google Classroom didn't work, or hey, my, my Zoom call didn't work, where do you start? Is it the application? Is it Zoom? Is it, you know, is it the computer? Is it the network? Is it the Wi-Fi? Is it the 4G? Is it the home network? Where do you start? This is where you start. This tells a story and say, first of all, they were having an issue or they weren't having an issue. Here's the stats for the last day. Here's the stats for the last week. Here's the stats for the last you know, three or four months. Do they look good? Is there a pattern here? Are they going over their bandwidth? Are they using too much bandwidth? Do they have other devices connected that shouldn't be? So this tells a story on where to look first and get rid of that network world's Waldo piece. And everything here is backed up by data. And you can dig down into the data, which tells the story even further, because when people call in, they don't tend to call in when the problem happens. They call in after the fact and be like, oh, I couldn't get online last week, so I couldn't, couldn't do my homework. Well, let me take a look at last week. Oh, I rebooted it. Oh, let me take a look at this. Well, I, that data is not there. This is a, uh, basically a time machine. Let's you go back in time and you can actually see what was going on at the time of the bad experience and be able to deal with it at that level going forward. Some more of the dashboard. This digs into some of the troubleshooting pieces that I want to highlight. Not only, it tells you what's plugged into it. So you can see the ports here in the physical. You can see how it's connected to cell phone towers. You can see how the packets and the data is routing across the network. Again, both in real time and historical. So. Most people don't know or realize the internet. When you pick up a VoIP call or a Zoom call or send an email, it goes across the US, even if you're sending it across the street, the way it routes and things like that. And the simple WAN allows you to visualize that and be able to decide where your issue is. Just like everything else in life, it's all about the weakest link. And you've gotta be able to identify the weakest link. And the simple WAN tool and uh, technology will do that for you and visualize it. So just about everybody can understand, including non-technical people. Where some of our real secret sauce is, and I want to dial into this, comes to the 4G. So most people don't know. A hotspot, your phone, when you power it up and it connects to 4G, uh, it connects to the strongest signal. It doesn't know how many people are connected to that same signal. It doesn't know how much bandwidth is at the tower at that signal. It's a fairly stupid technology. And when you've got a bunch of hotspots that are the same, they behave the same. And that's not always efficient. 
because you've got other towers that you can direct this stuff to. You've got other frequencies that you can use. With the simple end technology, not only can we view the towers and see what's available here, we can then tune it remotely, or you could, as an IT administrator, tune it remotely. So in a certain area where a tower performs better than another tower and you want to force it, you can see this in the simple end dashboard and you can force it to that right frequency or a better frequency. And you can actually force it to get more bandwidth, faster connections, lower latency, better quality, better experience than just the auto setting. And I can tell you from experience, almost nine times out of 10, we can tune this better than the auto setting. In fact, most cases, the auto settings that just come up are almost always awful. And that's where those traditional hotspots are connecting to. And you can't do a darn thing about it because that's what they're there. They're just dumb, stupid devices. With this technology, you can look at a map of the area, all the towers, and force it to the best internet connection, not necessarily the best signal, not necessarily the best, you know, the closest tower, but the best connection, the better speeds, the better quality. And you can do that within seconds. You can do that all through this dashboard remotely. Some of the other pieces, I mean, we talk about this in business and in schooling. So there, schooling has SIPA policies. And there are some solutions out there. And you know, in the business side, we call it, there's something similar called HIPAA or PCI and things like that. But what you wanna be able to do is roll these policies in real time out to these endpoints without having the user do anything and having granular control and also being able to apply policies in real time across all the devices at a school or a district or, a, or an office. To give you some ideas, some of these are in the view that you're seeing now. Like you can roll out and say, tomorrow, I don't want these people accessing Facebook. You can add a Facebook block one time in the dashboard and it will roll it out to all the devices. And they can't get around this like your other SIPA technologies where they just change the DNS server. This is done at the network level and they cannot bypass this. If I wanna allow or bypass or do times of days, things like that, or I wanna block certain sites on a network level at a domain level, we can do that all from the dashboard after these devices are all in the field. You as a network administrator can do that with these devices while they're in the field, after they've been deployed. You wanna change their content filtering settings, you wanna change the restrictions, great, you push a couple of buttons and it gets pushed out to all of them in real time. Same thing with some of the wireless stuff. So if they can't get on the wireless, what do you do on a hotspot? Take it back? With this, you can actually change the settings in real time. You can change the Wi-Fi channel if they've got congestion. If they can't figure out the password, you're in control remotely. You wanna change the spectrum. I mean, there, there's everything is granularly controlled as much as you wanna be, but it's automated for those things that you don't wanna be. But it gives you full control remotely to deal with all of this. This is a quick picture of one of our boxes. Uh, really, it looks like a flying antenna crazy machine, but it can pick up signals with this design much further away than any traditional uh, you know, hotspot or access point. Uh, the key is, is in the design. We can tune into frequencies that these other devices just can't get into. We can do range that these other devices can't do. We can you know, get through walls where these other devices can't through. And the key here is, is it, we can support multiple carriers. So you know, AT&T, T-Mobile, things like that. The provisioning on this is zero touch, but the key thing is, is there's no interface on this box. It is completely locked down and tamper proof. That means your users can't get past your policies. They can't get past your lockdown. If you don't want them connecting their Apple TV to it, you can control that remotely. And you are in control. And as things change, you don't have to recall these devices to make changes. Our whole thing here is simple, right? It's in the name, simple win. So it's simple to order. Deployments are very flexible. Even after they're in the field, everything's plug and play. If things go wrong, it's very easy to get them back up and, and working the way they're supposed to. And the key thing here is the easy policy rollout. There's nothing easier and you're doing it at a network level, which cannot be bypassed like the other solutions on the market. As I said, the uh, presentation would be about 20 minutes. I really appreciate everybody joining today. Hopefully this was educational. Uh, since we're talking about schools. The idea here is simplicity through management and empowering IT teams to really own this without having to do a whole lot of work and reduce their workloads, reduce their time on phone calls. 
So again, I thank you for joining. If you uh, have a contact at Simple and already, please reach out to them for any questions and have a great day. We'll do another webinar next Thursday, maybe a little different, uh, maybe back to some of the business focus. But again, thank you for joining today.